Picture, if you will, a world where you've got an Excel spreadsheet and maybe every month you bring in monthly sales information. So here I have January through March. And then come April, somebody sends you a new file with a file attachment that has that month's sales figures. Wouldn't it be great if all we had to do was just receive the email? And once we know we have that email, we could go into Excel, right-click refresh, and the new monthly information is automatically brought into our report. We didn't have to open up the email. We didn't have to save the attachment, extract the data. In fact, you probably didn't even have to open up Outlook. This is the objective of this video, to show you how you can write a Power Query to reach right into your email account, find the latest and greatest email attachment for your data, and read that data directly out of the email attachment into your Excel file. Let's look at two different scenarios for doing this. Our first scenario will be when we only want to get the latest and greatest file. So if we get a file every month or every week or every day, whatever the scenario, but we only want the last file. So in this case, I want to show sales by department. So it's for whatever the last reporting interval is. So I'd like to be able to go into my Excel file, right click refresh and automatically get those numbers. So the prior reporting periods data is completely replaced with the new reporting periods data. The second scenario is when we want to retain historical information. So we don't want to lose what we have, we just want to add to it. So like I said before, we've got January, February, March. I want to be able to right click refresh and now automatically have April. So let's start with the first scenario. I've included a link in the video description where you can download text files of the Power Query M code. This way you can copy this code into a blank query and not have to recreate all these steps yourself. Now you will need to change a few things in the query. For one, you'll have to put your email address here and the pathing that I'm going to use in Outlook where I'm storing these emails, you may have to change this to your own path. Other than that, this code is fully baked. So here's the M code for one of our scenarios and here's the M code for another. They're almost identical. There's just some minor differences. And this has to do with the way that we're retaining data. I've taken the M code and translated it into somewhat English just so we can understand more easily what's happening. There are going to be three phases to this project, connecting to the Exchange server to find the necessary emails, extracting the data from the attachments of those emails, and then cleaning up the data for our report. The first two sections of the Power Query M code will require very little alteration. The first phase will only require you to put in your email address and a pointer to the folder where you're going to store these email messages. The second phase, the extraction of the data from the attachments is basically baked and everything from the data cleanup down is completely optional. It's just for me to be able to go in and build a chart. But all the data cleanup steps will be based on what your data is and what you need it to be once it comes out of Power Query. So for all intents and purposes, the first two phases are the only ones that this video is really concerned with. The first thing we need to do is create a folder inside of our email account to store all of the incoming emails with the file attachments. The reason for this is if you let the email go directly to your inbox, it's going to be a lot harder to distinguish emails with sale data attachment versus other emails with other attachments. So I like to set up a separate subfolder and then have all of those incoming messages go into that subfolder. That way when I scan that location, the only files I should be seeing are ones that qualify for this report. You can see here I have a folder called monthly report data and in here I have the email messages where I was sent the January data, the February data, and the March data. Now there could be other email in here like this one that doesn't have an attachment. So I put this in here just so we can see at the metadata level how to identify a message that has an attachment versus one that does not. So let's build the report that gets the latest month sales which in this case is March. In Excel we'll go up to data, get data, from online services, and then Microsoft Exchange. I'm using the Microsoft Exchange connector because my email address is an Office 365 address. If your work email address is associated with an Office 365 account, you'll still use this connector. But if your email address is something like Gmail, then this connector will not work for that. I've not tested it, but I've read that the ODBC connector will work with Gmail accounts. Perhaps that can be the subject for an upcoming video. So I'll go ahead and put my email address in here. Hit OK. Now I've skipped the part where I put my password in because that password was already cached. But after putting in the email address, you will be prompted to put in your password. So from here we can see my email account and we can see the main folders for things like calendar, mail, contacts, tasks, etc. So I'm going to select mail and transform data. So that will read the contents of my inbox and all subfolders. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this panel and zoom in. 
The first thing we'll do is filter the folder path, just so we scan the folder that's going to hold these emails with the needed attachments. So for me, that's going to be this monthly report data folder. I'll hit OK. And now we see entries for the four email messages that were in that folder. So here's January, February, and March, and then that junk email. Now we don't want the junk email. We only want email messages that have attachments. So if we scroll over to the attachments field, we can see this column here called has attachments. If it's set to true, it has an attachment. And if it's false, it doesn't. Well, I only want files that have attachments. So I'm going to filter this for true. And that gets rid of all the junk emails. The next thing I want to do is make sure I only get the latest message. So this is where the date time received column can come into play. I'm going to go to my sort filter dropdown and do a descending sort. So this ensures that the latest email received is the one with the latest sales information. Now we'll go up to keep rows, keep top rows, and I'll only keep the first row from the top. Scrolling over to the attachments column, this column is what actually contains the file attachments. And it's the only column I need, so I'm gonna right click and remove all the other columns. That ends the first phase of connecting to the email account, locating the folder of files, and then only picking the most recent file. If we click next to the word table, this is the attachments metadata, and we can see that the latest file was from March 2024. The file's contents are in this attachment content column, and that's what binary is referencing. So when we expand this column, we only want the attachment content column. So I'll go ahead and deselect everything except attachment content, deactivate the prefixing, hit OK, and now I've isolated the binary file. This is what actually has the data. Now, most people would go up and click this button called the Combine Files button. But when you do that, it ends up creating a whole series of helper queries that some people just aren't a fan of. So I made a video that shows you how to pull the data out of the binary files without creating all those helper queries. Link in the video description and in the upper corner. So for more information on this technique, go check that video out. So what I'm going to do is go up to Add Column, Custom Column, and I'm going to use the CSV function called document. It only has one argument, and that is the source, the source being the column that holds the binaries. I'll close parentheses, hit OK, and I was able to extract that table. Clicking next to the word table, we can peek into the file and we can see all the data. I no longer need the binary, so I'll delete that column. And in the file attachments table, I want all of this information, so all four columns. We'll go to the expand table button. I'll tell it I want all four columns, hit OK, and now you've got your data. Everything after this is based on what you need to do to clean up the information to suit your needs. Doing things like going up to home, promoting the first row to a header row, setting your data types, maybe filtering, sorting, it's all totally up to you. Everything that concerns this video stopped basically at the removed column step. So everything after this is very mission specific. So we fast forwarded in time a little bit where I dumped the query output to this green table and I built a chart. Now the moment of truth. Here I am in Outlook. I've received the latest and greatest file for the April sales. And all I have to do is take that email message and put it in this monthly report folder. Now, if you really want to get efficient in this process, you should go up and create a rule, a rule that identifies something like any email that comes in with the words monthly sales data in the subject line is automatically moved into that folder and marked as read. This way you won't have to be burdened with the task of actually taking that message and dragging it and dropping it into that monthly report folder. So now that I have the April data, I'll go back to Excel, right click on the Power Query table output and choose refresh. And now I've got new data. And if you really wanted to turn this into a zero click solution, we could go up to data, queries and connections, go to our query, right click properties, and we could even set this to automatically refresh as soon as the user opens the file. You could even put it on a timer. So maybe every 20 minutes, every 15 minutes, as long as you leave the file open, it'll automatically refresh. I'm gonna hit cancel. So now that we've seen how to create a report where it replaces the old data with new data, now let's look at a report that retains the historical information and adds to that new information. Here we are back in Excel, new workbook. We'll go up to data, get data from online services, Microsoft Exchange, I'll put in my email address, hit OK. We'll go to the mail section, transform data. Start off by filtering the folder path. The only folder we want is the monthly report data folder. Scroll over to the attachments. We only want email messages where the has attachment column is true. So we'll filter out the falses. But this time I want to keep all of the files. So I'm not going to sort by date and then only keep the first row. I'm going to keep all of them. So scrolling back over to the left, you see we currently have January, February, and March. Let's go over to the column that actually holds the content. We'll select that column, remove all other columns, 
peeking inside of one of these rows, remember it's the attachment content field within this table that actually holds the attachment data. So we'll expand this column, only select attachment content, clear the table prefixing, hit OK, and then we're going to avoid creating all those helper queries by going up to add column, custom column, and we're going to use a CSV document function to point to that attachment content field. Close parentheses, hit OK, and now if we peek into one of these files, let me bring up the preview, we can see this is now the April data. Here was the March data, the February data, the January data. We don't need the binary files any longer, so we'll delete that column. We want every field within the table, so I'll go to my Expand Table button, select every column, hit OK, and now everything after this point is just standard Power Query. Promote your headers, set your data types, sort, filter, group, whatever it is you need to do for your data. Back in Outlook, I've received the April data, my Outlook rule is automatically place it in my monthly report data subfolder. We go back to Excel where we have our monthly report, right click on the Power Query output table, refresh, and now we've absorbed the April sales transactions. So each month now, we receive a new file, the Outlook rule automatically puts it into the subfolder, and Power Query will now scan that subfolder, pull in the latest information, update our report. So how cool do you think this little bit of Power Query wizardry is? Using Power Query to automate the smaller, more inconsequential tasks allows us to focus on the larger, more important tasks. Let me know what you think in the comments, and tell me if you've used this before if you think you could use it. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.